In Snake Catcher Part 2, we're going to use continuous buttons to control the left and right movement of your player. So I'm here in the setup method, and remember that's where you create all your objects at the start. I need to create the player, as well as the left and right buttons. All of these variables are going to be self.variables. That means I can access them in the other methods below. We're going to call this one player. And I'm going to choose a puzzle piece. And you'll find that in the puzzle game art folder. This green one will do. And I'm going to set it to 512 which is in the center of the screen. And I'm going to position it 50 from the bottom. Lastly, I need to use self.addChild to add it to the screen. Now I have to see what it looks like. Now that the player is on the screen, I need to go through and add my left and right buttons. Again, this variable needs to be a self.variable because I need to access it further down in my code. It's going to be a sprite node and I need to go into the icons folder and select the left arrow. If you put this on the screen, you'll find that it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to change the scale of it to 50%. I'm going to set its position to 8080. Usually when you're doing this, you would just put in some numbers and you would use trial and error to figure out exactly where it's going. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the alpha value to 0.5. That'll mean that it's half see-through. Finally, I need to use self.addChild to add it to the screen. Now I have my left button added to the screen. I'm going to duplicate that code and modify it to make a right button. The only thing you really need to change is the position. The right button is going to be slightly further to the right. I'm going to set it to 200 for its X. Now we have two buttons on the screen. We just have to make them work. To get our buttons to actually work, we need to do some code in the update method. The update method runs every single frame and by default, Python Easter runs its scenes at 60 frames a second. The one thing I want to change is the for loop. As we're going through all of our snakes one by one and shifting their positions, I want to just change this to list. I'm going to put list and then some brackets around self.snakes. That means as it goes through the loop, it's going to use a copy of the list rather than modifying the list directly. For this next part of the code, you need to make sure that your indentation level is correct. So make sure you've got your cursor where mine is flashing. You might need to press delete a couple times. The first thing I'm going to do is have a look through the self.touches dictionary and pull out all of their values. 
A dictionary in Python is a way to store keys and values as pairs. We can go through it in a later video, but all this does is goes through all of the touches that are possible. The iPad can support up to 11 touches at the same time, so we're going to loop through the touches one by one, and we're going to see if any of them are inside of the left button or inside of the right button. Now we need an if statement that's going to check to see if the touch.location is within the boundary box of the left button or the boundary box of the right button. B box stands for boundary box and it represents the rectangle around your sprite node. In here, we want to calculate a new version of X because we want our player to move left or right. We're going to take the X part of where the player is positioned and we're going to subtract 5. Now we just need to make sure that they don't go off the left edge of the screen and they don't go off the right edge of the screen. That can be done by checking to see if the new X is greater than or equal to zero and the new x also needs to be less than or equal to 1024. If it is that means we can actually move our player. To move our player we just need to set its position and we set it to new x and whatever y position it was set to. Once you have the left button working, it's now time to get the right button to work. We need to copy this chunk of code and put it here. When you're copying and pasting, just make sure that you put it in the correct indentation level. You may need to press backspace a couple times. This time we're going to check to see if we've got our touch in the right button and if so we're going to add 5. Now our left and right buttons work. In the next video we'll work on the collisions between the snakes and the block.